Tucker Carlson uh, weighed in on the Elon Musk purchasing of Twitter, which looks like it is going to go through finally. And I want to show you a couple moments from this very unhinged monologue where not only is he lying and misconstruing the uh, details of this, he's also saying something that is so deeply ironic, it almost makes you laugh, right, if it wasn't so dishonest. Take a look first at the opening to this monologue. Why they're so obsessively focused on what you can say, on the words you can use, because they understand the power of words. And Elon Musk, whatever his faults may be, understands this too. And that's why he's trying to buy Twitter. Not because he needs another company, no. And Elon Musk purchasing Twitter is more than just a potential change to the media landscape. It is a true existential threat to the hegemony of the people currently in charge. Allowing freedom of speech means the possibility of a revolution from below against the forces destroying this country and the West. So everything rides on this. They know it. You may not, but they do. So they've got to do everything they can to destroy Elon Musk, who was just the other day a hero to them. He's the don't remember that. I don't remember him being a hero, except for, yeah, I do like Tesla um, as far as popularizing electric vehicles. Electric car guy, remember? They don't even mention his electric cars anymore. Yes, we do. Because he's doing the one thing you're not allowed to do, which is giving voice to people. So since April, they've been trying to destroy Elon Musk. First, they called him a racist. He's from South Africa. He must be a racist. So what, what does that even mean? We're trying to destroy. OK, maybe you're talking about other people that you associate with the left, I guess, but people just will be like, yo, that thing you said, Elon Musk is stupid. Or I think at one point he talked about how he's actually a Republican and it's like, cool, I don't respect your political views. That's not me suppressing you or trying to um, take you down in some way. It's just me also voicing my freedom of speech towards you. When it turns out he was too rich to care, they moved on to new tactics. So then NGOs funded by George Soros commanded companies to pull their ad money away from Twitter. We'll starve him out. And then some Saudi prince tried to argue. That so then this is funny because um, one of the things that is so dishonest about this is if you kept up with the possible purchasing of Twitter, it was Elon Musk who was being all weird and wanting to pull out, out of it for a while. And then he saw that Twitter was going to try to um, you know, challenge him legally for doing that. And he kind of swung back around. But then look at this a uh, little bit more from it. What you really think about the people in charge to make the contest a little less asymmetrical, to give you a little power. And they're terrified that he will succeed. So what we're seeing is the desperation of a regime, not just a political regime, but a cultural regime, a class of people running the country who feel like they are losing power and they're panicked. Okay, so then, he talks about this class of people, you might call them the ruling class, that is lo losing power. Well, that's exactly what he put, put, you can see here, at his uh, lower third. The ruling class is about to lose control. Talking about Elon Musk purchasing Twitter. That's the ironic part. He's trying to tell his followers, this is so interesting, that it is an example of the ruling class losing control when Elon Musk buys Twitter. Why is that ironic? Elon Musk is now or, you know, has been one of the or the richest person on the planet. What is the ruling class other than the uber, uber wealthy? No, Elon Musk purchasing Twitter is not the ruling class losing control. It's the ruling class gaining more control or the control staying the same, actually, is more accurate. Um, it's so weird the way Tucker Carlson is trying to frame this. And I loved the way that Twitter responded to this. Mediate put together a few people's uh, kind of dunks. We need to have a national conversation on what the definition of ruling class is. True. It's pretty simple. The working class are the millionaires and billionaires who own the companies, and the ruling class are the people who work for them. And then finally, when the right talks about elites and the ruling class, they seem to mean whoever holds cultural power, even when the right itself holds the political, economic, and other forms of coercive power. And yes, that last tweet is exactly what I try to articulate so often on the show. And one of the parts of his monologue was going after this particular uh, news pundit 
and saying that it's the uh, women, the uh, white women or something, the liberal women who are screaming at you and those are the ones trying to uh, oppress you. And it's just this obsession that a lot of people on the right have with those who maybe hold some cultural power, right? The dominant narrative may be leaning at this moment towards um, the liberal ones, okay? But when you talk about the ruling class, you're talking about more than um, which narrative is popular on Twitter. You're talking about who holds the real, as one of the people wrote, coercive power um, on people. I like to think of the working class versus those at the very top. And so this is something uh, Tucker Carlson does a lot, which is try to frame these issues in a way that will completely distract his viewers from the real fact of who holds power in our society, which is still the wealthiest. It is absolutely still the most politically and um, the most politically powerful and economically wealthy. And in that world, most very, very wealthy people are a little bit more on the right because they want their money to stay in their pockets and the left wants to tax them more. And those in political power are still a lot of them completely unhinged. Of course, Trump was at the very top of that at one point, but then you also have all these people in the House and Senate who are crazy right wingers. Um, and so that is something that people need to be aware of. And you can understand, yeah, let's criticize the annoying people, as I talk about um, often, who scream really loud about these somewhat uh, tangential issues uh, on Twitter, and that's kind of who you think of, of like a knowing liberal. But that's not at all the real truth of who's holding the power and who's able to oppress you in the United States. And so it's just a massive joke to frame this event as, you know, one of the people for the average American is stepping in, Elon Musk, to take the power out of the hands of the ruling elite. It's so stupid.